and uh, we realize that he can be much better than he was at home, and uh, we're looking for a mighty tough ball game naturally. But uh, I, I, like I mentioned yesterday to you, I think a big factor today will be the fact that uh, that Denny McLean only worked six innings the other day, whereas uh, uh, Bob Gibson worked nine. And of course, uh, with only three days rest, uh, that might be a, a, a big factor today. Tim, you were talking about ballparks, the St. Louis Park and this park right here, Tiger Stadium. Do you think your ball club would be a better ball club in this park or the one you're at right now, Bush Stadium? I think in our ballpark we're a better ball club because I think when we move into a stadium like this, like happened, uh, like uh, what happened yesterday, uh, uh, McAuliffe and Kaline hit two balls that probably would have been out of our ballpark. But uh, I think it hurts our pitching to come into a ballpark like this. Uh, we used to play in Old Bush Stadium where it was only 310 down the line, and, and our club wasn't modeled after our stadium. And the, uh, clubs like the Giants and the Braves used to come in with their uh, uh, big guys, their awesome power, and, and uh, they used to kill us because they'd hit balls out of the park, and here we were, we couldn't hit the ball out of the park. So I think uh, playing in our park, uh, we have a decided advantage over any club that might come in there. Tim, I know you want to get loosened up for the ball game. I see a lot of the other players doing just that for both teams, Tigers and the Cardinals. I would like to ask you one more question before you leave. Gibson today, McLean today probably the largest TV audience of all time. And I know you don't have a prediction. I know who you want to win. Let's talk about what Lou Brock might want to do just briefly. Does he have a book on McLean? Do you think he'll be able to steal off him like he has off the other pitchers thus far? Well, uh, naturally, Denny takes a lot of time getting rid of the ball. And uh, and uh, I think with that big, with the way he kicks his leg, it's kind of like Juan Marichal of the Giants. Uh, the way Denny kicks his leg up high, I think Lou will be able to get a better jump off of him than he would off an ordinary pitcher, but I, I, I really hope it doesn't rain anymore because that will make the ground slower, and, uh, and uh, when the ground is slow naturally, I think it would be uh, uh, an advantage for the Tigers. Tim McCarver, thank you so much. Good luck today in the rest of the series. Thanks very much, Tony. Now let's go on back upstairs. The Commissioner of Baseball, uh, General Eckert, the uh, head of the public relations of the baseball, Joe Reichler, met with the umpires down at home plate. We're just about ready to get underway. The umpires have examined the diamond. Denny McLean started a warm-up down in the Tiger bullpen. Bob Gibson has not started a warm-up yet. And they have now, there's McLean, number 17. They're going to start the game at 1.35, 19 minutes from now. They have set a definite time, 19 minutes from now. Game four will be underway. Well, uh, I don't want to get in an argument with Tim McCarver, Joe, and everybody's talking about Gibson coming back with only three days rest. Five times this year he pitched with three days rest, and four of those five times he pitched shutouts. <laughs> I got a feeling. No. I got a feeling a guy like Gibson Kurt doesn't worry too much about rest. I believe he gets up at Christmas Eve and throws a slider on the outside corner. And those kind of guys, especially in the World Series, can there be such a thing as being overworked in the World Series? No, and uh, McLean. Uh, 24-year-old right-hander, 31-game winner. Uh, wasn't his day in the opening game. He only allowed three hits. All the Cardinals said he had great stuff. Uh, they, they had warned him about going after his fastball. He's got that riding fastball. If you swing at it around the letters, it's over your shoulder, up around your eyes uh, when it comes in around the plate. But he was behind in the hitter, Joe, behind all the way. And if he's back with his usual control that he has, and we should see some pitching duel today. No question about it. i got to believe that uh, today, I believe I said it earlier, that I think that the right head will be on McLean's shoulders. Uh, that first game with all the hoopla about the Las Vegas and what have you, that has to take an effect on you. I know I was worried about getting rid of tickets. I can imagine what he went through. And now that it's all over, and he's got a thing called pride going for him because Mickey Lolich did what McLean was supposed to do, and uh, all he's heard about is Lolich, Lolich, and uh, when you've got a thing uh, called pride going for you, you're going to give it that little extra, and I'm sure today is the day. I didn't know you had any extra tickets. You didn't come to me. I mean, <laughs> worried about getting rid all of tickets. All of the Italian relatives left over from the wedding got him. <laughs> the Tigers are out in front of their dugout now, starting to warm up. So are the Cardinals. There will be no player introduction. The uh, cards are going to start their same batting order that they use against the right-hander. That means Maris will be in right field. It'll be Brock, Flood, Maris, Cepeda, McCarver, Shannon, Javier, Maxville, and Gibson. We'll give you the batting order a little bit later, uh, slowly. So if you're keeping score with us, you can jot it down. And the Tigers have a little change today. 
They're trying to get every bat in there they can against Gibson. And they're going to start the veteran Eddie Matthews at third base. Get a left-handed bat in against him. Uh, they'll leave Stanley in there at shortstop, and the rest of their lineup will be the same. Quite a story on Eddie Matthews, Joe. It looked like he was all done. He had his final disc operation earlier this summer. And at his age, uh, it's tough to come back from his final operation. But uh, all the Tigers tell me that he's been swinging the bat uh, very well. And uh, this is a short right field here for him. And he could be a real threat today for him. No doubt about uh, him being the real threat because the, the one big thing that he has done, he has stayed in shape. A lot of times the fellow won't play and he'll sit on the bench and pout and second guess the manager and say, how could that dummy not play me? But uh, he, uh, he is in shape and ready to go. I might just add, Kurt, looking at that uh, ground crew working, that the track is fast for Lou Brock. There'll be no effect on him unless his inner soles got wet. All right, let's go right back to the dugouts again. Thank you, up there, Kurt. We've got manager Red Shaney of the Cardinals. Red, Joe Gargiola was just mentioning upstairs something about this track. It's fast right now, but it's drizzling just a shade. It could hurt your offense a little bit should it continue to rain, shouldn't it? Well, if it gets too wet, it uh slow us up in our running to, to a certain extent but uh, first we do have a little speed on, on the ball club but uh, we hope it don't rain too much I'm more worried uh, if it happens to go uh, three or four innings or maybe just two innings and it gets rained out completely I lose my best pitcher because he is he's not able to come back the following day of course manager Mayo Smith loses his best pitcher also it works both ways doesn't it yeah, well, that's right. But McLean has been used to pitching, I think, all year with three days rest. And uh, Bob's just about had practically every start he's had this year. He's had four days uh, rest except for three different times. And, of course, today he's starting with three days rest. And with the three days rest he had uh, during the season, he shut him out each time he came in. So um, he could pitch, and I'm sure he can do it again. Red, you've had these scouting reports filter in through your scouting staff, through managers probably in the major leagues as to what to do against the Tigers. How do they impress you as a ball club? I know you think they're a good ball club and you respect them. You have to in the World Series. They wouldn't be here. But generally speaking, what about them offensively in the pitching department, defensively? What kind of impressions have you formed? Well, uh, the scouting report that they gave us uh, did say that they have a good power hitting ball club. They have a good defensive club. They don't run uh, like a lot of ball clubs uh, run. They don't have quite the speed on the base pass, but, uh, and their pitching is good. They talked about Lowley, they talked about uh, uh, McLean and a number of others. Of course, we respect them uh, in, in every way because they did win by quite a number of games in the American League, and we see them in spring training, Tony, uh, quite a bit, uh, three, four, five ball games, and you could tell then that they had a real fine ball club last year and this year, and uh, I still say that it, uh, it has a chance to go at least six to seven ball games uh, before this is over with. Fred, let's talk about infield play a little bit. The fellow out there for the Tigers, Mickey Stanley, you've played a, well, you played a whale of a second base for a good many years, and I've had the experience of shortstop. I can't help feeling that Mickey Stanley has more pressure on him during this World Series than anybody else. How do you feel about that? Well, he played uh, just a few ball games before the series started, and I, I'm sure uh, it is to a certain extent, but Mickey's a fine ball player, we all know, and he's doing a fine job at short, and I'm sure Mayo Smith wouldn't have put him there if he didn't think he could do it. And uh, I'm sure uh, Stanley accepted and more or less told him he'd sure go out there, and which that shows he's a real pro. Red, today in the lineup for the Tigers, there's going to be a change. I think you've heard of it already. Eddie Matthews is going to be playing at third base. You saw Eddie in that National League for a good many years, one of the top performers, top home run hitters in the National League in all of baseball. Is Gibby going to be able to get Eddie out? That's a silly question. He can get anybody out, can he? Well, I hope he, <laughs> he can. Eddie's always been a fine ball player, played with him and against him. And uh, he's, uh, he's a threat every time he walks a home plate. Uh, of course, I don't guess he's quite the fielder he used to be, uh, but who is after uh, getting a little older, too? And But uh, I, I uh, feel Eddie can help this ball club, and. Uh, I was more or less uh, wishing that he wouldn't be put on that uh, on the list, you know, after he was out. Yeah. But it, it's uh, perfectly fair. He was with them uh, all year, and he was uh, had a bad back, operated on, and he came back. And uh, I don't know if he's going to quit this year, but I wish he wouldn't be on the list because he's a threat with the bat. Certainly is. What about Lou Brock, Red? Uh, is he stealing on his own? Are you giving him signs, or does Lou just about take care of himself on those big bats? Well, Lou steals on his own. Uh, of course, there's a few times where we give him a sign where we don't want him to steal, and. Of course, we got it pretty well figured out now between the two of us, and uh, he's uh, free. I don't like to take any aggressiveness away from a guy that is real aggressive like Lou, and once you do, if you're going to try and tell him exactly when to steal, uh, 
he just uh, you just don't get the, the jump maybe and he goes whenever he gets a good jump Red, I see the umbrellas are going up again. It's beginning to rain a little bit harder. Some of the players are out here running around a little bit, and the Cardinals are getting loose enough, but it's starting to rain just a little. I would like to talk to you about one more thing, however, before you go, and that is something that must be a note of encouragement for you when you saw Orlando Cepeda yesterday hit that home run. Well, it sure is, and, of course, uh, McCarver's hitting a little better right now, too. The two of them are. Uh, they've been hitting better the last two weeks of the season, which is a big lift for us. Anytime you have your fourth and fifth man not hitting well you know and it, it's pretty tough so we we hope that Orlando keeps going uh, hitting as well as he has been Red Cheney thank you so much congratulations thus far and good luck the rest of the year thank you sir. thank you so much now let's go on back upstairs now it started a sprinkle again and some of the fans who had moved out in the open uh, pop the umbrellas up and Look for an overhanging spot. Both clubs continue to warm up. The umpires are still down around third. Uh, you were down in the dugout. Uh, did you talk to any more of the players uh, besides uh, Mickey Lowley? Yes, I got to talk to Freehand. We were going to get Bill on, but then uh, they got to removing the tarp and getting ready for the ball game, so we didn't get him on. Uh, talked to Freehand and talked to Denny McLean. And Denny says, while I'm ready to go and, uh, and I feel like that I've had a little more rest than Bob Gibson, I don't quite like pitching on a day like this. He says, I've had a uh, little bit of shoulder trouble and, and rainy weather and cool weather it stiffens up. And he said, obviously, I'd much prefer a bright, sunshiny afternoon. But in a World Series, at a time like this, you can't pick your spots. And he says, I'll go along with it. And he says, uh, it'll be just as fair for me as it is for Gibson. Take a slow motion look at uh, the two pitchers today. This is Bob Gibson, and uh, this is shot down at the Cardinal bullpen as he's warming up. The one factor about Gibson the Tigers talk about is how he throws so hard the entire game. He's just as fast in the eighth or ninth inning as he is in the opening innings. And Al Kaline commented that he never saw a pitcher that hits the corners the way Gibson does with stuff. You know, a lot of fellows will throw great stuff, but it's down the middle or it's not where they want it. But he said, I never saw so many pitches on the corners. Gibson threw me. And Denny McLean has been warming up in the Tiger bullpen. 31 game winner. Watch his motion. Very compact fella, power pitcher. And of course today he hopes to have his control. He hopes that he's ahead of the hitters today and not behind them. He only gave up three hits in the five innings, but it was control that got him in trouble against the Cardinals in the opening game. Gibson shooting for his seventh World Series victory in a row. And if he would win his seventh World Series game, he would be tied with Reynolds and Ruffing of the Yankees who each won seven. Whitey Ford leads with ten. He has the second highest strikeout total. Of course, McLean appearing in his first series will not be shooting for any record or all-time uh, series record unless he strikes out more than 17. But McLean is young and if the Tigers keep going he may be in a lot more series with a chance to go for some records. There's an interesting sight now if you look out center field. Some of the Cardinal pitchers are running. You say why would they be worrying about keeping their legs in shape at the end of the season? But they're taking their win sprints out there. This series still has some games to go, and they don't want to endanger any muscle pulls with quick starts. So they're out there. That's part of the uh, Cardinal pitching staff taking their win sprints. If you see that all during the season, one of the big things for pitchers keeping those legs in shape. George, uh, the announcement came that we start here at 1:35. It's seven minutes away, and evidently they're going to state of that schedule. I see Vice President Humphrey now has come in and has taken his place alongside of the Commissioner of Baseball, General Ecker. So he's all set. 55, 56,000 are also in their seats here. It'll be a standing room crowd only again today despite the weather. 53, 634 is the announced, but No standees allowed now. Fire, fire commission 
Place oh, well, we announced yesterday, I did, Kurt, that uh, standing room only, but the Tigers uh, decided not to sell standing room, and Jim Campbell informed me after the game, he said, uh, I'd like you to correct that. We do not sell standing room. The part seats 53,634, and that's all the tickets we sold. There were a lot of standees, but uh, obviously were people who were in uh, the wrong seats. Jackie Robinson, former great second baseman of the Dodgers, Vice President Humphrey, Commissioner Ecker in the commissioner's box, and Mayor Jerome Cavanaugh and Judge Vincent J. Brennan of the city of Detroit. A color guard is wheeling into position. The band is back under cover, and I imagine we're going to have our national anthem very shortly. In the meantime, Jimmy Campbell, the general manager of the Tigers, has been out talking with the umpires, and they're out around third base. With the Kinnaman behind the plate of the American League, Harvey's going to work first base today in the National League. Bill Haller of the American League is second, Tom Gorman of the National League is third, Honey Chick of the American League on the left field line, and Landis will be umpiring the right field foul line of the National League. 135. Five minutes from now, game four. The World Series will be underway. Denny McLean and Bob Gibson now have revved up their warm-up pacing. They're both firing hard now. Gibson started behind McLean, of course. And now, ladies and gentlemen, our national anthem, sung by Marvin Gaye. Oh, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight that streaming whose broad light and bright stars through the fairy for the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming when the rockets went there the bombs bursting in air gave through through the night Fourth game of the 1968 World Series being brought to you from Tiger Stadium as the Cardinals meet the Tigers. This season, television is the best in sports attractions on CBC. Football in both CFL and NFL. NHL hockey. Tennis. Golf. The World Series and the Olympics. For the broad look at the complete sports scene, follow CBC Sports Coverage, a part of what television is all about. I have the first ball thrown out now. The Tigers take the field. Hank Greenberg, uh, Former slugging first baseman here and also played the outfield. Hank Greenberg has the honor of throwing out the first ball. He gets a big hand. There it is. The Bill free hand. Now they'll do it again. 
John Fetzer, the owner of the Tigers, the president of their ball club, right behind him. Hammer and Hank Greenberg, a Hall of Famer. Charlie Geringer threw out the first ball yesterday. So McLean's on the mound, ready for his warm-up pitches. The Tigers are on the field. Game four is about to get underway. It's going to be delayed by 35 minutes. And they're here to call the play-by-play -play for you in the first half of the game. The Tiger telecaster, George Kell. Thank you, Kurt, and good afternoon again, everyone. Well, it's a cloudy, overcast afternoon, and we're still getting a little bit of rain here at Tiger Stadium, and we're going to get it throughout the afternoon. Just hope that it won't be enough to stop this ball game. We're going to start on time at 1.35, as Kurt announced to you, but we're still getting a few fine drizzles, and the weatherman has said that it will rain off and on here in Detroit until sometime late tonight. In fact, we have the weatherman right here with us. Brock will lead off to the Cardinals. He'll be followed by Flood, then Maris, then Cepeda, McCarver, Shannon, Javier, Maxwell, and the pitcher, of course, will be Bob Gibson. There is one change in the Tiger lineup. Eddie Matthews is at third base today in place of Don Wirtz, and he'll be batting in the number seven position. Bill Freehan has dropped to the number eight spot. So it'll be McAuliffe, Stanley, Kaline, Cash, Horton, Northrop, Matthews, Freehan, and the pitcher, of course, will be 31-game winner Dennis McLean. Another full house here at Tiger Stadium, 53,634 have jammed their way into this ballpark to see game number four in this great pitching classic between Denny McLean and Bob Gibson. They were the pitchers, as you remember, in game number one, and in that one, Bob Gibson was absolutely tremendous. He set a new World Series record with 17 strikeouts, and he shut the Tigers out. So here's Lou Brock to step in to lead off. been the big hero in the series of course for the Cardinals he's been on base a lot and when he's on base he's running the Tigers have not been able to contain this fellow as yet McLean ready and here's the first pitch of the ball game it's outside one ball no strike Brock Flood and Maris will be the batters in the first inning There's a drive hit deep into right center field. This ball's hit a mile out there, and it is gone into the bleachers in deep right center field. Boy, Lou Brock hit that one a country mile. You don't see many of them, Kurt, Kurt hit into the bleachers in right center field here in Detroit. And especially in the upper deck, he hit a tremendous shot in St. Louis. He now leads the series in base hits with six, and... Uh, that gives him six hits to 12 times up. He's only batting 500. That's his fourth series home run. Second in this series. Flood hits it on the ground to second base. McAuliffe has it to first, and he's out. Kurt Flood hits the first pitch down to second, and Dick McAuliffe tosses him out. So there's one out in the first inning, and the batter will be Roger Maris. McLean is not throwing hard, not like he can. Here's a good shot from center field. The pitch is outside. One ball, no strike. Maris got his first series hit yesterday, a double down the left field line. There's a bouncer to first base. Cash is going to have to play it to McLean. He drops the ball. McLean had an easy play, and he dropped it. He's supposed to be the best on the Tigers taking a throw covering a bag, isn't he, George? He is, Kurt. He's the best fielding pitcher probably the Tigers have, but uh, that one just popped right out of his glove, and it'll be an error charged against the pitcher. So the Cardinals have a runner at first base with one out. This is Freehand talking to McLean. And the batter will be Cepeda. Orlando had a home run in yesterday's game, a three-run blast to put the game out of reach. 
One ball, no strike. Here's Dennis checking the sign with Bill Freehand. That ball is over. In case you join us late, Lou Brock opened the ball game with a tremendous home run into the bleachers in right center field. Flood bounced out second to first. Maris was safe on an arrow by Dennis McLean. The pay to the batter. Inside and it's ball two and strike one. He took a little bit off the curveball on that when he caught the Peta out in front. He fouled it back. That's the pitch he would like for Cepeda to have hit. He had lost his power in his swing and wouldn't have been able to drive it very far. He struck him out. Sidearm fastball and Cepeda strikes out. So well, that's out number two here in the first inning, and the batter will be the catcher, Tim McCarver. Tim's been to the plate 12 times in the series, and he's had three hits. One ball, no strike. The runner at first base, Roger Merritt. Two out. Cardinals lead one to nothing. We're in the first inning. There's a strike. McLean has picked up the tempo a little bit. He's going harder right now. We're quicker right now. Wonder how he can see the plate the way he tugs that cap down over his eyes. There's a line drive, base hit. Willie Horton cuts it off. Maris will go to third on the single. McCarver holds on. A line drive base hit by Tim McCarver in the left center. And the Cardinals are roughing McLean up a bit here in the first inning. This fourth game of the 1968 World Series is being brought to you live and in color from Tiger Stadium in Detroit, exclusively on NBC where America watches more sports than on any other network. Mike Shannon is the batter. Two on and two out. Cardinals lead by one. Foul ball. It was a slow curve to Shannon. He got the key hit off McLean in St. Louis. Drove in the first run and set up two more when the Cardinals scored three off Denny. Got the fastball over. That's Denny McLean's strikeout pitch, the sidearm fastball. Normally he doesn't throw it until he gets two strikes on a batter, but uh, struggling a bit here in the first inning. That's the pitch that's helped him this year. He uh, just started to use it this year, hasn't he, George? First time. Helped him immensely. Here it is again. This is going to be trouble. McCullough's going to have Stanley. Go safe. Stanley cut in front of McCullough on that high bounding ball, and uh, he had no chance to get him. Shannon has good speed. He just outran it. So it'll be an infield single. Here it is in slow motion, Kurt. Over the head of the pitcher. Here comes Stanley. Got rid of the ball in a hurry, but as George Cal said, Shannon goes down the line very well for a big man and beat it out. And scoring is Maris. It's an unearned run. Maris had reached in an error by McLean. And so the Cardinals are off and running here with two runs in the top of the first. Here's Hooley batting with runners at first and second. Julian Javier, two on, two out. Inside, he almost hit him. Oh. 
Javier had a two-run single off McLean in St. Louis on opening day. Foul ball. That one hit freehand right on the foot. Makes it a ball and a strike to Javier. The first run of this inning was certainly earned as Brock dri drilled it deep into the bleachers in right center, but the second run coming as a result of an error by Denny McLean. One ball, one strike to Julian Javier. Here's the pitch. Sidearm curve. One ball, two strikes. Two to nothing. The Cardinals lead. We're in the first inning. Dennis McLean trying to get him out. Very intense young man. He got him on a curve. Javier takes the curveball and he's called out on strike. The Cardinals get two runs in the inning on three hits. One error, two left, and the scores will be going to the bottom of the first. St. Louis, two, with Detroit coming to bat. Well, uh, here's Bob Gibson and the fans here in Tiger Stadium will be getting their first chance to see this fellow in person. They watched him on television. Game number one, but uh, they've been anxiously awaiting their chance to see Bob Gibson. Dick McAuliffe steps in to lead off. He'll be followed by Stanley and then Kayla. Fastball is right in there. One strike. Gibson wasted no time as he pumped a good fastball across. Ground ball, first base. Cepeda will make the play unassisted. So McAuliffe goes out to the first baseman. That's one away. No batter will be Mickey Stanley. Nice round of applause for Mickey. The fans appreciate the move that Mickey made from center field into shortstop. It's been a tough move for him, but he's played well. There's a pop fly. Maybe in place. The Pater is chasing it near the stands and makes the grab. Nice one-handed catch by Cepeda. Had to be a little careful. The uh, ground is wet there, Kurt. Right, and he was a thrill fella yesterday with that home run of his. First home run and 60 times up in the series. He was all smiles in the Cardinal dugout today. Orlando Cepeda. And here's Al Kaline. that Gibson is pouring that fastball in around the knee. Al had a two-run homer in yesterday's game. This is foul back and out of play. Two strikes. George Gibson hasn't struck anyone out yet. He looks just as quick to me as he did in St. Louis. As quick, uh, he hasn't been throwing the curveball yet, right. Kurt, to set up the strikeout. Just as quick. I don't think there's any doubt about it. Almost got the high fastball by K-Line. Still a strike two count. Here's the curve, low and away. Gibson threw K-Line nothing but curveballs down in St. Louis, and this is the first one he's delivered to him today. Could be that he's saying, I'll throw him the fastball until I get in the jam and surprise him with the curve, maybe. Foul tip. It's another good curveball. One ball, two strikes to K-Line. We're in the first inning. And in case you joined us late, the Cardinals picked up two in the top of this inning, and they lead the Tigers two to nothing. 
Here's a drive hit deep into right center field. This one is well hit, and it is off the glove of Flood. Kaline goes to second with a double. First Flood, the top defensive center fielder in the National League, gives this one a tremendous try. He was playing K-Line way over in the left center. He got the tip of the glove on it, couldn't hold on to it. The play is being backed up by Roger Mara. And now K-Line has wound up the second with a double. If Flood had caught that one, that would have been the catch of the series. Didn't look like he had a chance, Kurt, and uh, as you said, he almost made the play. Norman Cash, the batter. Oops, he swung at it. Norm tried to check his swing. Bill Kenneman said he'd gone too far. This fellow's a big favorite here in Detroit. He has had a great last half and uh, helped lead the Tigers to a pennant. One ball, one strike. Here's the pitch to Cash. Outside. Ball two and strike one. Down low. Three and one. Kurt, I think uh, Cash came up with the best line of the day in the clubhouse a moment ago. He says, uh, what would be nice is play about four innings and rain it out and Gibson miss a turn. Hasn't worked out that way. No. He's pitching Norm low and away right now, trying to keep it away from his power. Took the slider. That was a hard slider breaking in on his fist. Three and two to Cash. K-line at second base, two outs. Cardinals lead two to nothing. We're in the first inning. He struck him. Gibson reared up and threw the fastball by Cash. For the Tigers in the first, no runs on one hit. There were no errors, one left. And the score at the end of one inning of play, St. Louis 2, Detroit nothing. Now Maxwell will lead off for the Cardinals here in the second inning. Here's the uh, success we're at first base, coaching for the Cardinals, Joe Schultz over at third base. One strike to Maxwell. He'll be followed by Gibson and then Brock. Two to nothing, the Cardinals lead. We're in the top of the second. Jenny McLean getting ready. Strike two. He's throwing a lot of sidearm fastballs today. The shot from center field is a wonderful shot. You can watch the ball coming right in. There it is, strike three. He got the curveball over the outside corner, and Maxwell was called out on strike. That's one away in the second inning, and the batter will be Gibson. Three strikeouts for Denny McLean. This Gibson's a good hitter. He's not to be taken lightly. One ball, no strike. Then he got it over, but it was a little bit low. High curve ball, one and one. In case you're wondering about the weather, you can, because it is getting darker again here at Tiger Stadium. It's awfully dark and overcast. No rain at the moment, but it's in the air. Slow curve. One ball, two strikes. Gibson hit a home run in the World Series last year in the seventh game of the World Series at Fenway Park in Boston. He's hit 12 home runs in his lifetime in the National League. There's a bouncing ball deep to short. Mickey Stanley, long throw. He got him. 
see many shortstops with that sidearm throw, Kurt, but he guns it over there. He does. He's got a good arm. Here's Brock now coming up. They talked about keeping him off the bases. He's now been on base seven times in his last eight times up. His first time up in this ball game, he hit a tremendous home run into the bleachers in deep right center field. ball is low. One ball, no strike. Two to nothing. The Cardinals lead. We're in the second inning. McLean against Gibson on a rainy afternoon in Detroit. Bouncing ball to second. Dick McCullough has it over to first in the inning. Well, McLean gets them out. One, two, three. Nothing across for the Cardinals in the second. And the scores we go into the bottom of the second. St. Louis two and Detroit nothing. We pause briefly for our station identification. Here's Willie Horton to lead off for the Tigers in the second. It's down low and it skips by McCarver. One ball, no strike. Horton, Northrop, and Eddie Matthews will be the Tiger batters here in the second inning. Outside, it's ball two and no strike. It's beginning to rain again at Tiger Stadium. This looks like one of those days it can't miss. Dark clouds hovering low over the stadium. Gibson ready. Way up high, it's three and oh. A ball three and a no strike count to Willie Hart. Cardinals lead two to nothing. We're in the bottom of the second inning. Outside he walks. In. So Willie Harton gets a walk. He's at first base with nobody out. And the batter will be Jim Northrop. Jim's only had one hit in this series. He has not been able to get off the ground as yet. Fly ball, left field. Should be an easy play for Lou Brock. He puts it away. So Northrop is out on the first pitch. That's one away, and the batter will be Eddie Matthews. Well, George Eddie, uh, you have to admire him for hanging in there after the back operation, but also the good break for a player who's been as good as he is to get straight into a team that gets in a pennant race, wins the pennant, and gives him another shot at the World Series. You're right, Kurt. You almost got into one last year over here. Boy, he had a good cut at a fastball. Same thing happened to Maris. He came over here and got in two World Series the last two years he played. This is Wally Moses coaching over at first base. Tony Cuccinella at third base for the Tigers. Inside. One ball, one strike to Eddie Matthews. There's Willie Horton at first base. He opened this inning with a walk. Northrop then fly to left field for the first out of the inning. Cardinals picked up two in the top of the first. They lead the Tigers two to nothing. Foul ball. Matthews has had some good cuts at Gibson. Eddie Matthews will be 37 years old next Sunday. Here's a drive to right field. It's in for a base hit. Eddie Matthews drilled it hard to right. He hit a curveball and a good one. A 
That's hit number two of Gibson. And the batter is Bill Freehand, who's looking for his first hit in this World Series. Right, he got a fastball over. Two on with one out in the second, and the Cardinals lead two to nothing. He tried to check his swing. That one might have been out of the strike zone. See Gibson perspiring freely. It's a rather warm day here in Detroit in contrast to yesterday. No, he checked it, they said. Freehand checked his swing, they said, and it's one ball, two strikes. All right, Gibson's unhappy with that call, and so is the Cardinal dugout. They're steaming. It's a tough play, Kurt, for the umpire That's behind right. the plate. He gets help from the umpires on the bases, and nobody gave any help there. Here's the Cardinal dugout. They, they all came out, only for a moment. The pitch. Down low, and it's two and two. A ball two and a strike two count to freehand. The Tigers have runners at second and first. One out. Cardinals lead two to nothing. They have not scored off Gibson in this World Series. Way up. Three and two to freehand. Here's Shane Deese coming out. Shane Deese, the manager of the Cardinals. Gibson has not been letter perfect, Kurt, in this game as he was in game number one. Oh, he uh, he struck out two in the first inning at St. Louis, struck out the side in the second, two more in the third. He was ahead of the hitters. He has delivered a lot more pitches in this game than he had to in the first inning and the third in St. Louis. This is the key pitch of the ball game for him so far. Three and two to freehand. Here it is. He fouled it back. Still a full count to Bill. He's given up a walk and a single in this inning. In between, he got Northrop out on a fly ball. The three-two pitch. Another foul. Boy, Freehand is hanging in there tough, and Gibson is throwing hard. Believe me when I tell you he's throwing hard. Strike three. He got the fastball over. Freehand is called out on strike. A big strikeout for Gibson. And it leaves it all up to Denny McLean. That's his second strikeout of the ball game. In St. Louis, Gibson struck out at least one batter in every inning. Denny McLean, the batter, he popped it foul and out of play. He's got 11 straight innings now with at least one strikeout in this World Series. Two on and two outs. We're in the second. The Cardinals lead by two. Outside with a curve. One ball and one strike. Then he pops it foul. It's over near the Cardinal dugout. Cepeda is there, and he's got it. Almost ran in under it. No runs in the inning on one hit. There were no errors, two left, and the score at the end of two. The Cardinals, two, and the Tigers, nothing. 
television rights granted by the commissioner's office solely for the entertainment of our audience and any publication, reproduction, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the express written consent of the commissioner's office is prohibited. Kurt Flood, the leadoff man, he lines it to right field, a solid base hit for Kurt Flood. He waited on the curveball and laced it to right. That's hit number four for the Cardinals. Roger Maris will be the batter. He was safe on an air and scored a run in the first inning. The squad will go too. You can see him taking the big lead. Maris fouls it off to the left. He doesn't run as much as Brock, but uh, he can run, and the Tigers know it. Gives you a good uh, split view here. Cash holding against Flood, Maris at the plate, and the rain is coming down much harder right now at Tiger Stadium. Up high, one ball, one strike. Cardinals have out hit the Tigers four to two and they've outscored them two to nothing. The runner at first, Kurt Flood. Here's a drive into center field. North is going back. He's there, makes the catch. Flood had gone all the way around the bag at second. And he had to hustle back as North made a fine throw. You know, Flood knew there was nobody out. Uh, he went around two steps around second and got back, but that's some pretty daring base running. Kurt, I'm watching this rain come down right now, and it is raining hard, as hard as it's rained all day, and what a monumental decision this is going to be for somebody if they have right. to stop the game. They're either going to have to play it in the rain, or this infield is going to get soaked here very quickly, and the conditions are going to get miserable. Cepeda, the batter. He pops it up. Norman Cash going down the right field line after this one. Boy, he needs some windshield wipers on. Norman Cash makes the play on a foul fly off the bat of Cepeda. That's out number two, and the batter will be McCarver. Well, if it was a nothing-nothing ball game or a tie game, it, it wouldn't be such a big decision. But with one team out in front, and each game so all-important, of course, there comes a time when you just cannot play, too. The decision rests solely with the commissioner of baseball. And he's here, right in the front row. Here's a drive to left center. McCarver coming through with another hit. This one's going all the way to the fence. That'll get a run in. McCarver is headed for third, and he'll go in easily. That ball hit the wet grass and it scooted by Northrop all the way to the fence in deep left center field and Flood scored easily from first base. That's his second triple of this series. Amazed that ball got through that gap that quickly after the rain. You'd, you'd think it would have died out there, but it scooted like it was on sun-baked ground. Gives you some idea, Kurt, of how good a shape the ground is in out there so far. Here's Mike Shannon. He had an infield single in the first inning. He drove in a run. Here's a drive fair ball down the third baseline into the corner. Shannon is on his way to second, and he'll go in with a stand-up double. Boy, he hit that one like a bullet. A shot just inside the bag, and Mayo Smith is coming out of the dugout. McCarver scores and the Cardinals lead four to nothing here in the third inning. Here's Mayo. He's got Joe Sparman, the bullpen. They've tagged him hard. Flood had the line drive single to right. McCarver shot in the gap in left center. Shannon hitting the ball hard. Six hits off McLean, and it looks like 
Neil Smith will lead him in. It is raining harder now. It rained from 11 o'clock right up until we started this game. And this, I believe, George, is the hardest that has actually rained so far today, right it, now. It is, Kurt, and uh, it's much darker than it's been all day. Javier the batter, and he takes it up high. One ball, no strike. Umbrellas are everywhere. Bleachers in center field covered with umbrellas. Outside, a ball two and a no-strike count to Javier. The Cardinals have a runner at second. Here are the umbrellas that I mentioned a moment ago, and they're very much in attendance today. The pitch to Javier, he swings at a curve. Ball two and strike one. Cardinals got two in the first. They picked up two here in the third. They lead the Tigers four to nothing. Outside, good stop by Freehand. Almost got by him. Makes it a ball three and a strike one count. And this is really a down four now at Tiger Stadium. There seems to be no letting up. A 3-1 pitch. Outside, he missed with a curve, and Javier gets the walk. You'd have to believe that that was semi-intentional. And they're going to stop the ball game right now. The umpires, I believe they are. They're, they're meeting in the center of the infield. Look and at, they're going to stop it right now. Look at their uh, Jack. Stroke of his first baseman, Cash. The beta struck out. A Carver singles. Maris going to third, and Shannon's infield hits brought in Roger Maris to make a 2 0 Cardinals. McLean looked sharper in the second. He put the cards down one, two, three. But in the third, Kurt Flood single to right. Maris flied out. The Peta fouled out. McCarver tripled to left center, driving in a run, and Shannon double driving in McCarver. The Tigers had two hits. K line double with two out in the first, and then a single after uh, one out. Willie Horton had walked, but Bob Gibson then on a 3 2 pitch struck out Bill Freehan. And it looks like they're going to take the tarp off and we're going to resume play here in Detroit. But it'll take time to get this tarp off. There's a lot of water on it. And if you look out, you'll see the big uh, puddles of water in the depressed areas. This water will have to be dumped off into the left field area. The ground crew will have to get their wheelbarrows and rakes and sand and patch up some of the sloppy spots. The infield had started to get in bad shape just before time was called. And if they had let time continue or the game continue, this infield might have been unplayable. It might be all right now. It's not going to be ideal conditions in any manner. Uh, the Cardinals, of course, with a four-run lead and Gibson on the mound, it's all to their advantage. And they've been over there with their fingers crossed, hoping this rain stops and the game can continue. But it's going to be an hour layoff at least and more for Gibson. Sometimes this can affect the pitcher. He comes back and he's not the same man after warming up, getting himself ready to open a game, and firing two or three innings, and then having to sit in that clubhouse for an hour. Some of them come back and continue and keep their stuff. Others don't have it. Gibson, though, seems like a man apart about anything uh, with his pitching style. McLean, of course, has been out an hour or two. He was pitching in the top of the third. And we'll see whether Mayo Smith is going to leave him in the game. They had Joe Sparma warming up when the Cardinals started to get to McLean in the third. So far, the Cardinals have had four hot hitters in this series, including today. They've had Brock, who's batting 462. He's had six hits. Shannon has had six hits. He's hitting 429 in the series. Flood's hitting 385. He's had five hits, and McCarver's had five hits, with McCarver and Cepeda leading in RBI. Now K-Line has had a good series for the Tigers so far, and McAuliffe with a the bat. There's Commissioner Eckert back in the dugout, along with one of his aides, Charlie Seagar. That is uh, Bill Freehand. There's Charlie Creed, the road secretary of the Tigers, a uh, gray-haired man with a glass of looking up in the stands. Freehand looking around. This is the umpiring crew. 
Kinnaman behind the plate today of the American League. Harvey is first of the National League. Haller of the American League is second. Gorman is third. Honey Chick and Landis umpiring the line. And now, there, uh, that's Bill Kinnaman. You notice the American League umpires uh, have a blue jacket and gray slacks. The National League umpires are all in blue. And now they're around home plate. Looks to be in fairly good shape there. The bat area now is going to be the left field area where all the water has been dumped. Well, let's get some baseball action in here right now while we're waiting. Let's go back to game three. Here's Lou Brock on first base. He's on second base. This is the first inning. And 3-2 uh, pitch. Maris is called out on strike. Brock didn't slide. He could see he was going to be way out, so he just went in there standing up for a double play. That's the only time they've nailed Brock. But he actually was running on a 3-2 pitch. He wasn't going on his own in a steal as the Cardinals just put a play on. They're bringing the tarp back now to spread it out again over the uh, skin part of the infield, and they'll roll it up. Now the ground crew today has been... Here's Lou Brock now up at the bat again. This is a taped highlight of game three. Here's Brock's speed. He can beat you in so many ways. Stanley feeling that ball, and Brock with his speed beats it out. Now watch him go. Here's one of his six stolen bases so far in the series, averaging two a game. He hasn't stolen any today. There he goes. The throw is a fairly good throw. He's in there to beat it out. We're back live now as the tarp comes back. We're going to definitely resume play here in game four of the World Series. Take a slow motion study of Lou Brock. And we'll repeat again if he had stolen as many bases during the season as he raced to here in the World Series, he'd have stolen over 300 bases during the campaign if he had played every game. There he is with a speed in under the peg. We're looking down to both bullpens. They're empty right now. It's going to be interesting to see who starts to warm up for the Tigers. Will it still be McLean? No, sir. What do you say, George? You've been down in the Tiger dugout. Are you asking me, Kurt? It will not be McLean. It'll be Joe Sparma. Joe Sparma will be the new Tiger pitcher. That was the word from A.O. Smith uh, when he first started ring. Well, I first got there, and he said McLean would not resume that uh, his pitcher would be Sparma. George Kell has been downstairs. You've seen him interviewing some of the players. He's back up with us now and calling the play-by-play -play in the uh, opening part of this game. And George, uh, I was speculating about a pitcher's layoff. Sometimes it affects a man, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, McLean is out now. But it's Gibson that you'll be wondering about. He'll have at least the game is going to start in 10 minutes, they now inform us. He's going to have at least an hour and 15. The Cardinals are still at bat in the top of the third. He'll have a, at least an hour and 15, 20-minute layoff. And uh, you never know how it's going to affect a fellow. Kurt, this was the topic of conversation in the Tiger clubhouse and on the bench, mostly in the clubhouse where I was visiting with the players just a few moments ago. And one, they said if we don't play, if this game is postponed, then Gibson has lost start and it's unlikely that he would get to pitch three full ball games in this World Series and number two if the game does start and action is resumed how effective can he be uh, with an hour hour and a half or two hour delay now you pointed out some pitchers this is Joe Sparma and he'll be the new Tiger pitcher and he'll warm up from the mound so Joe is coming out to take his place on the mound they're spreading sand in the home plate area that has been completely covered by sand. I imagine they might do it to the mound also. Uh, troublesome spots in the infield will be taken care of. And the water from the tarp has now been dumped in the left field area, and that's going to be treacherous out there. Kurt, uh, I was sort of in on a high Archie meeting down there for a moment, but they left us. And, um, that was interesting. That it was about interesting. It. Uh, the commissioner of baseball came over with the uh, assistant commissioner, Joe Reichler, Charlie Seeger, the commissioner's office, 
They called Red Shane to East over and said something to him, and uh, uh, Red then left and went back to the Cardinal dugout. I don't think Red uh, agreed with exactly what they said at the time, but I don't know what it was. They said something to Mayo Smith. Then the six umpires and the commissioner and his staff went into the umpire's room, and they held a brief 10-minute meeting. And they came back, and immediately upon coming back, with a hardly even looking at the skies, they announced that the game would go on. We'll take the tarp off and start right now. Of course, it wasn't raining at the time, or just a slight mist, I'll say. But it looked as if they had made a decision that we're going to make every effort to play, and if there's any way at all, we're going to start this ball game and play it. Joe Sparma taking his warm-up costume, so this will mean that Denny McLean is out of the ball game. With Sparma warming up, George, let me tell the fans that this game is going to resume here in all oh, seven or eight minutes, top of the third inning. NBC will continue its coverage of the 1968 World Series. This game will be shown to its conclusion. And after this game, NBC will then switch you to Oakland, California, and the Boston Patriots Oakland Raider American Football League game. It was scheduled to start at 4 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time, 1 o'clock Pacific Coast Time. But this fourth World Series game will be played to its conclusion, will be shown by NBC, and then we'll switch to Oakland, California to the football game between Oakland and Boston, which was scheduled to start at 4 o'clock Eastern Time. It'll probably be joining in progress. Joe Sparma warming up. And let us repeat again, George, and you were downstairs. I don't know whether you heard it or not. There have been three tie games. They were called either because of weather or darkness. But there's never been a World Series game, as far as anybody can search back through the record, that started that did not wind up as an official game. This is not an official game yet. The tie games were official. All the individual records went in the book. And until the Tigers were trailing right now, either go ahead in the last of the fifth inning or back through the last of the fifth inning, this will not be an official game. Kurt, I had uh, an interesting visit with the umpires. They were seated on the Tiger bench as I went down there. And the first question, naturally, that I put to them, how long will you wait? What, uh, what decision are you going to make? And uh, so forth. They said this ball game will be treated exactly as a ball game would be treated during the regular season, whether it would be opening day, the middle of the season, or the latter part of the season. It will be nothing new at all, no new decisions made here. When we as a group decide that this ball game cannot be continued, then we will go to the commissioner and we'll make a recommendation that this game cannot be played. And the commissioner then will announce that the game has been officially called. And if we decide that it can be played and we want to take the tarp off and resume action, we'll give the same decision to the commissioner and he'll decide. George, did you talk to the umpires uh, when they called time at 2.15 Eastern time, just uh, how bad the conditions were to their thinking? They said that the uh, skin part of the infield was not bad as yet, but the reason they called it as quickly as they did, the pitcher's mound and the home plate area was getting in bad shape, and this is one area where they, they move around a lot, and of course there's some danger of a pitcher uh, pulling a muscle or hurting his back or something. And, and this was the first concern, the pitcher's mound and then the home plate area. The skin part of the infield uh, was soaked, but not bad. While Joe Sparma warms up, here's the Cardinal lineup again. Lou Brock leading off today in left field. Floods in center field, batting second. Roger Maris is hitting third in right field. Orlando Cepeda is the cleanup man at first base. Tim McCarver is catching and hitting fifth. And hitting he is with a single and a triple so far. Shannon at third base. He's had two hits. He's batting six. Javier is at second base, batting seven. Maxville is the shortstop. Gibson is the pitcher. Gibson is warming up again and is going to take a long warm-up. He started a warm-up down there in the Cardinal bullpen. Same time, Farmer walked to the mound. So Gibson will be out for the last of the third inning. The Cardinals, again, are leading four to nothing. When play is resumed, they'll have runners on first and second, two out. Kurt, let me make this observation, too. I talked to a member of the ground crew, in fact, two members, and they pointed out that once you put the tarp on the field and it gets wet, you take it off again, wrap it up, then uh, it's hard to put on again. It takes a lot of time to get it back on. 
They pointed out, too, that the infield is already wet and the outfield is in uh, very bad condition and that very much rain right now and uh, as much time as it would take them to get the tarp back on the field could uh, endanger the progress of this ball game if it should start raining again. And let's, uh, George, give the fans a Tiger lineup again. Dick McCullough leading off today is at second base. Mickey Stanley's at shortstop. Al K. Lines in right field hitting third. Norm Cash is the cleanup batter at first base. Willie Horton's in left field hitting fifth. Jim Northrup in center field batting sixth. Eddie Matthews playing third base today, batting seventh. Bill Freehand catching and hitting eighth. And now Joe Sparma, who is appearing in his first World Series game, who wound up the 1968 season with 10 wins, 10 losses, and earned run average of 3.71. 26 years old, born in Maslin, Ohio. He was a football player at Ohio State, a quarterback. This is his sixth pro season. Vice President Humphrey and the Commissioner of Baseball, General Lecker with Joe Reichler, the Director of Public Relations of Major League Baseball, right in back of them. They're back in their official box again. Pharma, the fireballing right-hander, George Cal will be telling you more about him. Joe Schultz is walking across. He'll be in your picture in a moment. There the Tigers taking the field again. And uh, we're going to have just about an hour and 15 minute delay. 328 now. It'll be a minute or two before they get going. The umpires again. Bill Kinnaman behind the plate. Doug Harvey in the National League at first. Bill Haller at second of the American League. Tom Gorman of the National League at third. Jim Honeycheck of the American League umpiring the left field line and Stan Landis the right field line. So it uh, seems about a year since we last played ball here but game four of the World Series is going to get underway. And George, you can set them up again here in the top of the third the way it was when time was called at 2.15. Well, the Cardinals have runners at first and second. There's two outs. Maxville will be the batter, but instead of facing Denny McLean, he'll be facing Joe Sparma, the big fireballing right-hander of the Tigers. And Sparma, while he has not enjoyed a successful season, he is probably the quickest Tiger of all of them. He'll throw harder than anybody. He has a good curveball, but control has been his problem. Joe has not been able to get the ball over this year with the degree of consistency that he has in the past, and so he's had a rather rough season. But he's capable of turning in a great job. He's got a good fastball, a good curve, and uh, he can overpower you. So we're ready to go. Farmer gets set, and the pitch coming up to Dow Maxville. Threw him a curve, and it's down low. One ball, no strike. Shannon is at second base and Javier is at first and the rain has started again. As soon as the ball game started, the rain has moved in again. Here's the pitch. Ball, it's inside and it's ball two and no strike. raining again and fog is moving into Tiger Stadium so uh, we're battling the elements here today. Farm is battling the Cardinals right now trying to get them out in the top of the third inning. Foul tip. George's temperature also is dropping. It's getting to be a chill, a raw chill in the air now. It seems to be about 10 degrees colder than it was a half hour, an hour ago. Well, it's getting late in the afternoon, uh, so to speak, here on a fall afternoon in Detroit at 3.30, and no sun at all, naturally. And just a cold, raw day right now. Here's the pitch. Line drive, one hop. McAuliffe knocks it down. Over to first, and Cash scoops it up. Dick McAuliffe knocked it down. A short hop on the liner. Flips it over to Cash in time for the putout. The Cardinals get two runs in the inning on three hits. They have no errors, two left, and the scores will be going to the bottom of the third, St. Louis four, Detroit nothing. Well, we go into the bottom of the third inning. We will the top of the batting order for the Tigers. Dick McAuliffe will lead off. He'll be followed by Mickey Stanley and then Al Kaline. Four to nothing, St. Louis leads. And it'll be interesting, Kurt, to see how this delay affects Bob Gibson. A pitch to McCollum. Foul tip. Temperature right now is 49 degrees in Detroit. The wind is from the 
southeast at nine miles an hour. Humidity, 86 percent. We've given more weather up here today than we have baseball. Curveball is low and it's one ball and one strike. Totals for the Cardinals, four runs on six hits. The Tigers, no runs on two hits. Down low and it's ball two and strike one. Dick McCollum waiting. Strike, he got it over. Two and two. Gibson gave no indication he's being affected by the delay or the weather as he burned a fastball over. Tremendous athlete, this man. He struck him out. Dick McCollum struck out. That's three strikeouts in the ball game for Gibson, and he continues to get at least one every inning, and every inning he's pitched in this World Series. Here's Mickey Stanley. He fouled to the first baseman his first time up. Outside, one ball, no strike. Just getting a slight drizzle of rain here in Tiger Stadium. Ball two and no strike. We're getting the same kind of weather we had a moment ago just before the delay as the clouds are moving in closer and it's getting extremely dark here at Tiger Stadium. There's a strike. Two and one to Stanley. Tigers batting in the third, one out, nobody on. Cardinals lead four to nothing. Ball two and a strike two count. That one might have been out of the strike zone. Looks like it was up around the bill of his cap. A two two pitch. Strike three call. Well, Gibson probably dispels any doubts in the minds of Cardinal followers and Shane Deese. Billy Muffet on the bench as to how he would take this delay as he strikes out the first two batters. Here's K-Line. He had a double his first time up. This is Norman Cash in the on-deck circle. K-Line the batter. One strike. Al got the first hit off Gibson and one of two that the Tigers have. This one's going to be out of play coming back. Dark day isn't hurting Gibson with that fastball of his. Not at all, Kurt. Not at all. A strike two count to Al Kaline. The pitch. Outside with a curve, and it's one ball, two strikes. It's raining harder, much harder at Tiger Stadium. This is out of play. Still one ball, two strikes to K-Line. Curve got away from Gibby, I think. Makes it a ball two and a strike two count. A 2-2 two -two pitch. A liner down the left field line. It is foul. K-line just missed the double. That's Jim Honachick down the left field line, the umpire who made the call on that one. Ball landed about a foot outside the line, as you can see. K-line hit a curve ball. He hit a curve into the upper deck here yesterday off Ray Washburn. He's one of the better curve ball hitters in the American League. He hits the fastball, too, but he hits the curve. 
Down low, and it's three and two. Full count to K-Line. Norman Cash would be the next batter if K-Line can keep it alive. Here's the big pitch. Bouncing ball up the middle. It's through for a base hit. K-Line gets his second hit of this ball game as he bounces one up the middle. And he now leads the Tigers with six hits. He and Brock are tied. Six hits apiece in the series. It's great to see this fellow having a fine World Series. He's waited so long and uh, almost didn't get in it. He's batting an even 400, six for 15. Norman Cash, the batter, takes a strike over the outside corner. Norm struck out his first time up. Down low, and it's one ball, one strike. A single and a double by K-Line, and a single by Eddie Matthews have been the Tigers' hit off Gibson. There's a liner that's caught foul by Cepeda. A soft line drive that Cepeda caught just outside the line. So for the Tigers in the third, no runs on one hit. There were no arrows, one left, and the score at the end of three. The Cardinals four, and the Tigers nothing. Bob Gibson will, this is Mayo Smith in the Tiger dugout. Johnny Sane sitting right behind him. Bob Gibson will be the leadoff man for the Cardinals in the fourth inning. Gibson, Brock, and Flood will be the Cardinal batters. Joe Sparma doing the pitching for the Tigers. One ball, no strike. We're getting action in the Tiger bullpen. Patterson, the right-hander, and Hiller, the left-hander. Foul tip. One ball and one strike. Daryl Patterson, hard-throwing right-hander. and John Hiller, left-hander, both of whom pitched in yesterday's game. Seems like a long time ago, Kurt, yesterday. Here's the 1-1 pitch coming up. Strike. Good fastball over the outside corner. One ball, two strikes. Gibson bounced to the shortstop in his first trip. Here she goes, a long belt to left. This one's well hit, and it's gone. A home run for Gibson. Bob Gibson getting his second World Series home run. He had one last year against the Red Sox. He caught a high curveball almost out of the strike zone, much as Mickey Lolich hit, and drilled it into the seat. Here's Lou Brock. We almost got that one right here. I thought you had it, Kurt. We almost had it right in the face. The thing Brock hits is a line drive, even to the TV booth. There's another foul that'll be out of play, and this one's a little better place. You know, they talked about free season, uh, free series. The Cardinals have stolen four times as many bases. The Tigers over twice as many homers. The Cardinals now have five homers, and the Tigers four. A two-strike pitch to Brock. A little bit high, and it's one ball, two strikes. I think they like Tiger Stadium. There was too much talk about how many home runs are going to be hit here, so they wanted to get in on the act. There's a drive into deep right center field. It's well hit, and it is against the fence on the first hop. This might be an inside-the-park job. Let's watch it. Nope, they're going to hold him. Brock is being held at third base. That ball hits the fence. 
at the 415 foot mark on the first hop. Here it is in deep right center field. This is the deepest part of this ballpark with the exception of straightaway center. And this is Mayo Smith coming out. He's got a right-hander and a left-hander in the bullpen. In this inning, Sparma has given up a home run to Gibson and a triple to Lou Brock. George, let me correct myself. I said the Tigers had four homers. They have five. Uh, Lolik is not in our list here of today's players, and uh, he hit a home run down in St. Louis. So they're even up at five home runs apiece. Here's the new pitcher coming on. It's going to be Darrell Patterson, the right-hander. While there's a break in the action here in Detroit, the score, the Cardinals five, the Tigers nothing. Darrell Patterson, tall right-hander, taking his warm-up toss. Cardinals have built up a five-nothing lead over the Tigers. They have a runner at third base with nobody out. Four of the runs charge to the starting pitcher Dennis McLean and of course the first run in this inning Bob Gibson's home run was charged against Parma and he's responsible for the runner at third base McLean pitched two and two thirds innings gave up six hits four runs he walked one and struck out three and Parma pitched one third of an inning he's given up two hits one run and Lou Brock would be charged against Sparma if he should score. George, we got a wire from somebody here in Montana. It says, hang tight, weather here beautiful, heading your way. Always beautiful in Montana. A long way. <laughs> Supposed to clear here at midnight. Kurt Flood, the batter. Tigers playing in tight on the infield. And the rain is still coming down at Tiger Stadium. Foul well, ball. One strike to Flood. Kurtz had a single today in two trips. Bounce to McAuliffe in the first inning, single to right field. The second time up. Singled and scored a run in the third inning. Cardinals are in a hitting mood today, picking up where they left off yesterday. Got the fastball by him. Two strikes. Patterson throws hard. He's only 21 years old. He for the Tigers in his first season. Did a tremendous job in the bullpen. You can see the rain coming down behind him, and it's coming down hard. Ball up high. One ball, two strikes. Here's the pitch. Another foul. Still a ball and two strikes. Blue Brock at third base with nobody out. We're in the fourth inning. Here he is. Curve down low. The count is even to flood. It's two and two. They finally found a place for that rock where he can't steal. He had a home run his first time up and tripled his third time up. And in between, they got him out on a ground ball. I guess you can hear the crowd roaring in the background. That's because it's raining hard. There's a fly ball into shallow right field. Brock's tagging up. This is going to be interesting. K-Line makes the throw, and he goes back. The old pro, Al Kaline, right here, has long been known as one of the better throwing outfielders in baseball, and he just showed Mr. Brock uh, that he was going to take charge for a moment. Look at this throw. Right on the plate, and Lou Brock came about halfway down the line and went back to third. So Kaline says, uh, you still have to respect the arm. A great throw. Roger Maris, the batter.
still a runner at third base, one out. Cardinals lead five to nothing. This is going to be foul and out of play down to the Cardinal bullpen. I told you a moment ago you could hear the crowd roaring out in the bleachers. And I think it's because the rain is coming down so hard right now. Of course, they'd like to see nothing better than stop this game, and that's what they're hollering right now to stop the ball game. Coming down pretty good. Well, the bleacher fans will stick with you. I'll say that, Kurt, through thick or thin. They always have. Yes, sir. Do you remember when Ted Williams left to go back to the Marines, his second tour of duty, and uh, we were all up there at home plate, and he never tipped his hat or said, oh, but finally he turned around to the bleachers, and he tipped his hat. He said, these are my people. And they roared. Those fans in the left field grandstand weren't his people, though. <laughs> Sit up above him there for years and give it to him. Here's the strike two pitch. A high pop fly near the dugout. Cash and freehand both coming over. Nobody covering home. Matthew comes over. They dropped it. Freehand and Cash ran together. And they dropped it. Matthews, Stanley even came in. When Stanley saw home plate uncovered, there he is going back to his shortstop position. He was coming in at full speed to cover the plate. Well, it's pretty hard to fault anybody on this, but uh, there's something that shouldn't happen. You shouldn't run together, but uh, Paul Richards said one time, I'd rather see spike marks all over my infielders than see one drop with nobody touching it and Cash and Freehand just collided. And the air is charged against Freehand. Outside. One ball, two strikes. Normally, a pop fly like this would be taken easily by the first baseman, but Freehand is so aggressive, and he's such a good catcher on pop flies that he challenges everything. Most catchers in baseball would holler at the first baseman immediately. You take it. Two and two to Merritt. Well, that was a big play for Patterson. It would have left him with only Cepeda to get out to hold the runner at third. There's the two-two pitch coming up. Outside, he just missed. Full count to Roger Merritt. Lou Brock moves up the line from third base. A ball three and a strike two count. Young Daryl Patterson gets ready. There's a bouncer to second. Nope, they can't get him. The ball bounced high in the air, and McAuliffe had no chance to get Brock. It'll be a run batted in for Roger Maris, and the Cardinals lead six to nothing as Cepeda comes on with two outs, nobody on. Great speed pays off in a lot of ways, Kurt. Not many people would have scored on that. He just puts the pressure on you, and it comes out of that locker room into the dugout. Talking about the pressure, Kurt, uh, pressure today is on the umpires and the commission. Got to be. The pitch to Cepeda. Strike. They resume play when it was still raining a little, and uh, then if this becomes a complete ball game, it's an official ball game, at the end of five, it'd be pretty hard to call it then to go the other way. So uh, there's a lot of pressure here today as to what to do with this game. They're trying to get it in, as they should. One ball, one strike on Orlando Cepeda. They'll play no favorites. You can bet on that. Too high. Ball two and strike one. Cardinals have six runs on eight hits. The Tigers have no runs on three hits. And the Tigers have chipped in with two errors.
Here's the pitch. Foul tip. A ball two and a strike two count. I don't think anybody went home during the delay. I see very few, if any, empty seats around. Here's the 2 2 pitch. Inside. Three and two to Orlando Cepeda. Patterson gets ready. Foul ball. Looks like it might have been ball four. Orlando reached out for a high outside pitch and fouled it back. Still three and two. Two outs, nobody on. We're in the top of the fourth. The Cardinals lead six to nothing. The big pitch. Ball, he walked. Cepeda gets a walk with two outs. Here's Orlando at first base, and the batter will be Tim McCarver, who's had a single and a triple today. Norman Cash has gone in to talk to Patterson, and boy, this brings the umpires out quickly. Bill Kenneman says, let's play ball, and Cash says, I want to talk to Patterson. And now Mayo Smith comes out. I know what Mayo's saying, Kurt. He says, uh, you mean I can't talk to my pitcher just because it's raining? But Cash is saying, too, if I want to go there and talk to him, I can. And I would imagine Mayo saying something else, too, that uh, we're not hurrying up this ball game to get it over for the Cardinals. Well, that's the way it's going to be. Both teams playing into the hills here. The pitch to McCarver. There goes Cepeda. He is out at second base. Cepeda was running on the pitch, and you know, uh, he wanted to get out quickly if he could, and he was tossed out by a free hand. Two runs in the inning on two hits of a no arrows, none left, and the score at the end of three and a half innings of play. The Cardinals six and the Tigers nothing. We pause briefly for our station identification. Horton will lead off for the Tigers in the fourth inning. Horton, Northrop, and Matthews will be the batters. And the rain continues to fall at Tiger Stadium. One ball, no strikes to Willie. They've got to go through the fifth inning if the Tigers are behind to get a complete ball game. The Tigers should rally and go in front, of course, four and a half innings would make it. But the team that's behind must bat five times. Ball two and no strikes to Willie. Barton had a walk his first time up. The only walk given up by Gibson. You can see the umbrellas in attendance. Very prominent in the stadium right now. There's a strike. Two and one to Willie. Ooh, he burned a fast one by him. Two and two. A ball two and a strike two count to Horton. And Gibson 
little disgusted with Horton as he takes time to go back to the Tiger dugout to uh, get a towel, I think. Oh, he's going right in the dugout. Got to get the mud out of his sleep. Bill Kenneman, the home plate umpire, Gibson watching him. Now they're starting to play around with the weather. This is almost inevitable, Kurt, that uh, we get some of this. And uh, justifiably so. Conditions are miserable, there's no doubt about that, but uh, they're trying to get it in. You can see the rain coming down, and it is coming down pretty hard. Crowd loved that little bit of by play by Willie Horton, whether anybody else did or not. Here's the pitch. He fouls it back and out of play. Still two and two to Willie. Willie on a dry day with the sun shining takes a lot of time between pitches. Went for the high fastball and he struck out. Five strikeouts for Gibson, and the batter will be Jim Northrop. He continues his pace of at least one strikeout per inning in every inning he's pitched in this series. One ball and a strike. Down low and it's ball two and no strike. Jim Northrup, the batter. The 0 2 pitch is in there for a strike. Six run lead behind 2 and 0 on these batters. Gibson just been laying that fastball right in there to him. There's a fly ball that's foul and out of play, curving into the seat. Evens the count at 2 and 2 to Northrup. Two pitch. Another foul should be out of play. Gibson quickly gets a new ball. This is in the upper deck behind the Tiger dugout, and now Northrop's going to the dugout. He just went over quickly to get a new bat, and you got to give Jim credit. He ran all the way over and all the way back with the crowd hollering, "Walk!" Two to Jim Northrop. Here's the pitch. Ball three. Gibby seemed to slip on the mound on that one, Kurt. A three-two pitch. Matthews, the batter, and he takes the strike. This one's up high, one ball, one strike. It's the first run the Tigers have been able to score off Bob Gibson. Matthews had the range and he pulled it back. 
ball started off is going to be about 10 feet fair. And it started to fade. The ball looked like it was going into the third deck when he hit it, but it began to curve, and as Kurt says, landed some 10 or 12 feet foul. One ball, two strikes. Two and two to Eddie Matthews. Matthews had a single his first time up. Still two and two. Those umpires are going to need a press job in those jackets when this game's over. Here's a 2-2 pitch. Outside, that one was close. Three and two. Gibby went to three and two on Northrop before he hit the home run. Now it's three and two to Eddie Matthews. The payoff pitch. Ground ball, second base. Javier has it. Depeta, he's out. Eddie Matthews goes out, second to first. That's two down in the batter's bill freehand. Through the curveball, breaking down and away to him. Foul tip. A strike two count. Freehand is the only Tiger regular, I believe, that has not set away to Right. A two strike pitch. Foul going into the Tiger dugout. Still a strike two count. Six to one, the Cardinals lead. We're in the bottom of the fourth. Up high, one ball, two strikes. See how this temperature has dropped, George. You can see Gibson's breath now. About an hour from now, it's going to be in the 30s. Another foul ball. One and two to freehand, who stays alive. Gibson is really pitching tough. He's trying to get the full five innings in. Bounce it up. Two and two. Mound's giving him trouble. It is. The mound is wet and uh, he's slipping a little bit. It's about twice and maybe three times in this inning that he has slipped on this wet mound. He struck him. Good curveball and three hands strikes out. The Tigers get a run in the fourth inning. One run on one hit, a home run by Northrop. No errors, none left. And the score at the end of four, the Cardinals six and the Tigers one. We go into the fifth inning. It's a six to one ball game. The Cardinals are out in front of the Tigers. Six runs on eight hits and no errors for the Cardinals. Detroit, one run, four hits, and they've made two errors. Tim McCarver will be the leadoff man. McCarver was batting in the fourth inning when Cepeda was thrown out attempting to steal. You can see the rain coming down. That's nothing new, and it's been raining here in Detroit since about 11 o'clock this morning. And that's what the weatherman said yesterday before the game started, that it would rain today, and he was right. Tomorrow, he says it'll be better. Here's McCarver. He's had a single and a triple today. Two for two.
One ball, no strikes to steal. Darrell Patterson is the Tiger pitcher. Pitcher number three for Mayo Smith. Outside, ball two and no strikes. He'll be the leadoff man in the bottom of this inning, and of course, we'll have a pinch batter for him, no doubt. We'll see pitcher number four. Here's the 2 and 0 pitch. Strike. Outside corner with a fastball. 2 and 1. The 2 1 pitch. Foul back and out of play. Two and two to Tim. This fellow had a bad series last year. He starred in the 64 World Series. He couldn't get off the ground last year, and he's coming right back this year with another fine World Series. There's the 2-2 pitch. This will be out of play. Still 2-2 two and two to McCarver. Cardinals got two runs in the first, two in the third, and two in the fourth, and the Tigers' lone run against Gibson came in the fourth inning on a home run by Jim Northrop. Outside, he missed. 3-2. Patterson trying to hit the outside corner with a curveball. Three and two to Tim McCarver. Leading off for the Cardinals in the fifth inning. There's a fly ball into left center field. Northrop coming in along with Willie Horton. Northrop makes the play. So McCarver is out on a fly to left center. That's one away and the batter will be Mike Shannon. Mike's had two hits today, a single in the first inning, a double in the third. Drove in a run with each hit. Here's a drive to left field. Willie Horton waiting on it. Puts it away. Whoop. He's out. Honorchick called him out. Willie caught it, started to throw, and then he dropped it. Well, that's why they have those umpires out there in the World Series. He was right on top of the play curve, and Jim Honorchick of the American League, and he made the quick decision. He ruled that he had control and possession. Long enough to establish. Two down, and the batter is Julian Javier. One ball, no strike. the one and no pitch he fouls it back and out of play well, at the end of this half inning our old friend Kurt Gowdy will be coming on to bring you the play by play Daryl Patterson has two outs with nobody on in the fifth inning Schultz coaching at third base not much to do in the way of flashing signs right now here's a bouncer up the middle and it's through in the center field Javier gets a ground ball single to center, just out of the reach of Stanley. Pretty hard for the infielders to move. But the infield is in very bad condition right now. That's hit number nine for the Cardinals, and the batter will be Maxwell. Dow's 0 for 2 in this game. Struck out in the second. There goes the runner to second base. Here's the throw, and he is out. 
Javier just giving himself up. He just trotted down to second base, and uh, he wanted Patterson to throw him out, and Darrell just turned around and threw him out. No runs in the inning on one hit. There were no errors. We're going to get a replay of that. Watch this. Throw down to second. You can see Javier as he's just giving himself up for Stanley to make the put out on him, and the Tigers, of course, are protesting. No runs in the inning. One hit, no errors, none left. And the scores, we go into the bottom of the fifth. The Cardinals six and the Tigers one. Well, we've had another meeting of the umpires at home plate along with uh, Mayo Smith of the Tigers and uh, Red Chandies of the Cardinals. And now they're making Gibson uh, move his sweatshirt. He had a lot of white showing along with the red, and the Tigers were protesting. But... Uh, if he's going to pull it up far enough now. I would imagine the meeting was all about uh, Javier going down to second without uh, attempting to steal, just trying to get an out and get it in so the Tigers would come to bat here in the fifth inning. And once Gibson uh, gets them out here in the fifth inning, if they do not, well, they do or do not go ahead, it would be a complete ball game. So uh, umpires warning both ball clubs about making travesty of the ball game. Well, we move into the bottom of the fifth, and uh, we're going to get a pinch batter, Jim Price, or the pitcher Patterson, is moving into the mic, all set to bring you the play-by-play -play for the last half of this ball game. our old friend, Kurt Gatt. Thank you, George Kell. Jim Price, a reserve catcher, swinging the bat in the on-deck circle. And the elements have been the story today. The game delayed 35 minutes from starting, and after it did start, time was called at 2.15. Nearly an hour and 15 minute delay. They took over again, and since then, a mist, a light, steady rain falling. It's dark, it's getting chilly. It is now a raw, miserable afternoon here. But nobody's left. Bob Gibson's first pitch is a strike to Jim Price. Gibson has been tagged for a hit each inning. But he has struck out six. Right in there again with that fastball. Nothing at two. Well, the Tigers bat through this inning. It has been an official game. him very quickly and that's strikeout number seven for Gibson. It says in the rule book that any part of an undershirt exposed in view shall be of a uniform solid color for all players on a team. And with this cold day Gibson has probably a white undershirt on that came through under his red Cardinal uh, jersey. Strike. Well, this fellow's remarkable after this hour and 15 minute delay. Under these conditions, there's a ball, the way he's pumping that fastball in there for strike after strike. Cardinal six, Tigers one. Last to the fifth. Collis has grounded out and struck out. That makes the count two and one. Five of Gibson's seven strikeouts have come since play has been resumed. Telecasting booth. We're uh, suspended right here. We're giving a little wave to show where we are, just to the left of home plate. We're looking right down the right field line. This is of all the major league parks, George. I think the closest of any broadcasting booth to home plate. It is. I don't think there's any doubt about it. The 2-2 pitch. 
He just missed with that one, three and two. A right-hander, Fred Lasher, is warming up for the Tigers. And he'll become their fourth pitcher of the day. Three and two, one out, nobody on to Dick McCollum. And there's another strikeout for Gibson, number eight. And here's Mickey Stanley. Stanley is fouled out and struck out. Gibson's only one behind his record-breaking pace. He struck out nine the first five innings in St. Louis. Today he broke the record with 17 strikeouts. He has struck out eight today. A ball, a low inside delivery, one and one. Two out, nobody on. Cardinals six, Tigers one. Two and one count. A line on deck. Dropping that mud and combination of sand now. And they treated the mound. A two one pitch. Ball three, three and one. Gibson has 25 strikeouts this series. The record for one series is 31 held by Gibson. He did that in three games. Well, back the way he's going, he's going to break his own record in two games. Three and two. He's bearing down on another all-time record held by Whitey Ford of the most strikeouts in World Series competition. We'll tell you more about that as the game progresses. The three-two pitch to Stanley. There's a smash in the deep left center. Kurt Flood positions himself and takes it. And the Tigers are out one, two, three. And this is now an official ball game. So at the end of five innings, the score is the Cardinals six and the Tigers one. We pause now for station identification. This is the CBC Television Network. Driving rain coming down. We have something added now to the game. Some new white bags have been placed at third, second, and first. As the ground crew came out, and Fred Lasher, who appeared in 34 games with the Tigers this year, winning five and losing one. Born in Poughkeepsie, New York. Lives now in Janesville, Wisconsin. 27 years old. Dell Maxville, Bob Gibson, and Lou Brock will be up for the Cardinals. Six runs, nine hits, no errors for the Cardinals. One run, four hits, and two errors for the Tigers. Pitcher. Sometimes even drops down a little bit below sidearm. Strike one to Maxville. Maxville is struck out and grounded out. This is going to be Mudsville, the last part of this game, the way this rain's coming down. The infield is in bad shape, Kurt, and it's going to get worse, but uh, there's nothing you can do about it. They've made a great effort to play it, and it's going to be played. Right, nothing in two. We told you earlier during the delays, we checked back through the books and never found the game that had been started, a World Series game, that had not become an official game. And uh, the record is kept intact. The two strikes it. A ball, one and two to Dal Maxville. sort of in an angry mood here right now. They're disappointed. They're 
Call that ball, too. They said he wet his fingers. We had that call on Earl Wilson. There's strike three. The rule, again, if you put your hand or your fingers up in the area of your mouth, it's an automatic ball. One out. Bob Gibson coming up. Gibson is grounded out and hit a home run. Gives a scattered round of applause. Top of the sixth inning. Nubler will have to hurry on this one. The throw by Lasher is in time. Gibson is out. Typical fielding play for a kit, uh, pitcher to come off that slippery mound. Wet grass, pick up a wet ball. Tough play, Kurt, uh, in playing third base over the years. I found this to be true. Any time that it was raining or even a light uh, dew or anything, made it extremely difficult to come in and pick up the bunch and make the play. Now here's that man again, Lou Brock. Hit a tremendous homer in the right center field bleachers, upper deck in the first, grounded out in the second, and then tripled in the fourth. He's now been on base eight times in his last ten times up in the series. Ground ball rammed hard to Mickey Stanley. And the cards are out one, two, three in the sixth inning. At the end of five and a half, the score is a Cardinal six. And the Tigers won. They have doctored uh, the home plate area again, are now moving to the mound to throw some fresh sand on it. In the last of the sixth inning, the Tigers will send up K-Line, Cash, and Hort. You know, only six managers in the 65-year history of the World Series have appeared in as many as six series. All except Walter Alston, who is still active, are in the Cooperstown Hall of Fame. Leading the roster is Casey Stengel with 10 series appearances, followed by John McGraw and Joe McCarthy with nine. Connie Mack got into eight series, Miller Huggins into six, as did Walter Alston, now and still the manager, who's had that insecure job with the Dodgers of a one-year contract, 16 in a row. George, I wish you and I could get an insecure job like that 16 years in a row. What he really got, Kurt, was a 16-year contract, one year at a time, I think. It might be a 20-year contract. He's still going. He's done a good job with those guys. K-Line having an all-around excellent series. He waited 16 years to play in one. He's now had six hits in this series and 15 times up. Today, he's doubled and singled. Made a good fielding play in St. Louis on the foul ball by Cepeda. Outstanding throw today with Brock on third, one out. Brock didn't go, Brock held, but it was a good throw. Bob Gibson, there's his World Series record. Two wins against the Yankees in 64. Three against the Red Sox in 67. Opening game win this year, and he's ahead right now, six to one. Eight strikeouts so far. Foul back, one and one to K-Line. Two and one. In the opening game against Gibson, K-Line had a double in four times. So he's now had three hits off Gibson and seven times up. And the most effective Tiger against him. The 2 1 pitch to K line. Going after the low inside, sinking fastball. Two and two. Nobody on, nobody out. Quite a sight, that breath in the air, the rain coming down, the pack stands in the background. Line drive to Maxwell. K-Line hit it hard again, but right at somebody. One away. Norm Cash has struck out and fouled out. Okay. 
Ball doing. Carver's going to straighten out with his pitcher. One oh pitch. Popped up. Mike Shannon calling for this one at third. Two down. Willie Horton has walked and struck out. Cardinal six. The Tigers won last of the six innings. That's right. Willie will chase that ball in the dirt now and then. Tomorrow, it is supposed to be a much nicer day. Clearing skies, warm around 65 degrees. Lolich, the left-hander for the Tigers. Bryles, the right-hander for the Cardinals. A ball, one and one. We'll be on at 12.30 with World Series Report. Eastern Time on NBC Television. Followed by the fifth game. One-one pitch. Blew the fastball by him, one and two. Gibson has struck out at least one batter in every inning of the first game in this game. Hasn't struck out anyone so far in this inning. Two down, nobody on. One and two. That foul's headed back toward the seat. And they have to even pound the mud out of a catcher's mat. That's something. Two down, nobody on. One ball, two strikes to Willie Horton. Two and two to him. If a smile was your umbrella today, you were in trouble. The 2-2 two -two pitch, there's strike three, nine strikeouts for Gibson. He has struck out now one man, at least one man in every inning of the series that he's pitched in. Three up and three down at the end of six. It's the Cardinals six and the Tigers one. This fourth game of the 1968 World Series being brought to you live and in color from Tiger Stadium on NBC, where America watches more sports than on any other network. Remember, at the conclusion of today's World Series baseball game, NBC will switch to Oakland, California for the American Football League game between the Boston Patriots and Oakland Raiders, which will be in progress. We'll have other games on, too, around the country, regional telecast. Flood is grounded out single and flagged to right. Kurt Flood, basic spread last year, a strike. Telling a one. Miami's at Houston today and Cincinnati at Denver in the American Football League. <coughs> one ball, one strike. Roger Maris on deck and Orlando Cepeda. This is the seventh inning. Maris. He pops it up. Mickey Stanley. Squeezes it for out number one in the top of the seventh. Roger Maris has reached in an air by Denny McLean. Has flied out. Ran it out. He's knocked in a run with his Infield bounder in the fourth has scored Lou Brock from third. A strike to him. McLean started. Two and two thirds inning, giving up six hits, four runs. And after the long delay, he didn't come back out. Farmer then took over. The ball. Farmer pitched a third of an inning. Two hits. He was charged with two runs. Darrell Patterson pitched two innings, and now Fred Lasher's on his second inning. Cardinals have one away, nobody on in the seventh. A 
a high pop in the shallow center. Going out, McAuliffe coming on is Northrop. Dick McAuliffe, the second baseman, has it. Out number two. Orlando Cepeda will be the next batter for the Cardinals. He has struck out, fouled out, and walked. I understand this World Series is being carried by satellite live. Many of Cepeda's countrymen, friends, and family are watching in Puerto Rico. The strike also in Mexico and Canada. Around the world. Boy, how time flies. A few years ago, it would go to the Mississippi River. One ball, one strike. Two down, the Cardinals leading six to one. They're batting in the seventh. Base hit for Cepeda in the left field, Willie Horton. Back into the infield. The Cardinals now have ten hits. They had 13 hits yesterday, 23 hits in these two games. Tim McCarver singles. Then he tripled in the third to drive in a run and a slide out. He and Cepeda each have knocked in four runs to lead the Cardinals in the RBI department. All one to him. Made it first, two down. Last ball away, two and nothing. So Peta bluffed the dash that time, but he wasn't going anywhere. Cash playing off the bag against him. Two and one to Tim McCarver. fly in a shallow center. McCullough scooting out. Going on is Northrop. Northrop calls for it. Makes the catch for the third out. No runs for the Cardinals in the seventh. One hit. There were no errors. One left. Six and a half gone. The Cardinals six. The Tigers one. It's the seventh inning stretch in Tiger Stadium. A wet and cold crowd on their feet. There's our camera on top of the stadium looking down. Bob Gibson warming up to face Northrop, Matthews, and Freehand. Gibson so far has allowed four hits, one run, a home run by Northrop in the fourth, has struck out nine. He now has 26 strikeouts in this World Series, 17 in the opener and nine today. Northrop, a fly ball to left field, retired him in the second, and he's home run in the fourth. Downing ball is Cepeda. Easy play for him, one away. And since Northrop hit that home run in the uh, fourth inning, one, two, five, eight, nine in a row, has gone down before Bob Gibson. And only one ball has been hit out of the infield since then. Bryles against Lolich tomorrow, 12.30 Eastern time on NBC. Eddie Matthews takes ball one. Matthews is single to right and grounded out. One out of two. Two and nothing. These two face each other plenty of times in the National League. Eddie's with the Braves. Outside, ball three. You know, George, we get a lot of wires and letters during the series. It's good and bad, but the one I got a kick out of today was from a Hall of Fame 
baseball broadcaster, Red Barber. That sent his best regards to all of us. He's a great guy. He's been on many of these. Three, nothing pitches, ball four. Matthews is on. Uh, Red lives now in Key Biscayne, Florida. One of the greatest sports announcers and baseball broadcasters in the history of our business. Always will be. I wonder how many World Series broadcasts and telecasts he's appeared on. Oh, plenty. Many, many. Great job by the old redhead. Right. Al Allen, another Hall of Famer. Bill Freehan up and struck out twice. He's looking for his first hit of the series. A strike to him. We're getting some warm-up action now in the Tiger bullpen. Killer, a left-hander warming up. Gibson fires a fastball by him. Killer warming up. Lasher, the pitcher, is due up next. Tigers are trailing six to one in the last of the seven. Frag, nothing and two. And nothing and three, that's the third strike on him. He's out of there. Three times, three hand is struck out. We're watching the dugout then, and Matchik now is coming out. Tom Matchik. He's been up twice as a pinch hitter. No hits so far in this series. Two down, Eddie Matthews at first. Ten strikeouts for Gibson. At least one every inning in the opening game and game four. Ball one. Gibson is the only pitcher in World Series history to pitch five games with ten or more strikeouts. Vandy Koufax, the only other pitcher with three ten strikeout games. Gibson now has five ten strikeout games. A one one pitch. Fly ball out in the left center. Kurt Flood has it, and the Tigers are out of the seven. No runs, no hits, there were no errors, and one left. At the end of seven, it's the Cardinals six and the Tigers one. We pause now for station identification. This is the CBC Television Network. John Hiller, 25-year-old left-hander who won nine and lost six for the Tigers this year with an earned run average of 2.39. He was born in Scarborough, Ontario. And here he is pitching to Shannon. Bounding ball, it's fair in back of the bag. Eddie Matthews, low throw. Cash can't handle it. Oh, Shannon's on. Be an error charge on the throw. Error on Eddie Matthews. That's the third Tiger error. Javier has struck out, walked, and singled. Killer lives now in Duluth, Minnesota. Tigers six, or tig uh, Cardinals six, Tigers one. Last ball for a strike, nothing a one to Javier. Tigers now have made seven errors in the series, the one for the Cardinals. Today, the Cardinals have had 10 hits for the Tigers, four. There's a drive down the left field line. That's a fair ball rattling around in the corner. Willie Horton's up with it. Shannon's in the third. And Javier's in the second. Looks like that one flunked right on the line. A double for Javier. Runners on second and third, nobody out. The 11th hit for St. Louis. Dell Maxville has struck out, grounded out, and struck out. And the Tigers cannot afford to give up any more runs when they bring that infield in.
Maxwell takes the curve inside for a ball. Bob Gibson has come out on deck. He's due up next. Ball two. Javier, like Brock, seems to thrive under World Series pressure. He now has a 385 lifetime World Series average. Shannon the third. Javier second. Nobody out. Eighth inning. Six to one. St. Louis. Curve for a second. Two and one. Dobson is warming up in the Tiger bullpen. Three and one count to Dal Maxville. That's Dobson. Now the bases are loaded with nobody out. Shannon's at third. Javier's at second. Maxwell's at first. And the pitcher, Bob Gibson, who grounded out, hit a home run in the left field seats in the fourth and rolled out of the set. Bob Gibson getting a hand, as he should, for his. Brilliant performances in World Series competition and, of course, during the season. He's got that infield halfway at short and second. That's ball for a strike to Gibson. As George mentioned earlier, Gibson's a Right at the bat, he can run the bases, he can field. He's an all-around athlete. He was a basketball star at Creighton University. Like two, nothing and two. Shannon, the lead runner. Javier is at second. Max Phillips first. No out. A two-strike pitch. Gibson reaching and fouling the back. Nothing at two. A little bit high and away. One ball, two strikes. Suddenly quit raining. And the mist is blown away. Here's the one two pitch. Two and two. John Hiller. Bases are loaded. Nobody out. The two two pitch to Bob Gibson. Fouls are back. Count goes to three and two. Mike Shannon at third. Javier at second. Maxwell at first. Nobody out. The Cardinals already ahead six to one. Top of the eighth inning. Here's a three two pitch. He walks him to force in a run. So Gibson has his second run batted into the game. Brock, 
Well, this is one time that the traffic lanes will be blocked. The bases are loaded. Rock hit a home run in the first, grounded out in the second, triple in the fourth, and grounded out in the sixth. And he has the most hits right now of anyone in this series. The infield in on him. Cardinals leading seven to one. A ball. McLean, Farmer, Patterson, Lasher, and Hiller. Five Tiger pitchers today. Eddie Matthews trying to settle Hiller down. A one nothing pitch to Lou Brock. Curve is outside to him, ball two. Two balls and no strikes. There's a smash in the deep center. Northrop watches the ball sail over his head. This may clean the bases. Two runs are in. Here's Gibson scoring. And Rock was all the way to third and goes back to second. Rock got in the third. Thought he was going to get into a jam with Gibson, who around in third and held up just a bit. Brock is so fast, he got back to second. He cleaned the bases. He's now had a homer and two triples in this game. It's a double now. He got the third and went back. Let's get the double. He had actually reached third. He had an easy triple. But he thought there was going to be a mess up on the bases, so he went back to second. And that's all for John Hiller. And there's a break in the action here. As the score now is the St. Louis Cardinals 10 and the Detroit Tigers 1. Pat Dobson, who's won five in Lost State, now comes in. The Cardinals have scored four runs here in the eighth. Lou Brock's the second. He has just cleaned the bases with that drive over the head of Jim Northrop in center field. He had reached third. Gibson had been held up, but when Gibson saw the throw coming in late, he came on into the plate. When Brock saw Gibson holding up, then Brock decided he better get back to second. So instead of a triple, he winds up with a double. He's now had a homer, triple, and double today, and he's knocked in four runs as he continues his sensational World Series play. Batters Kurt Flood, who's grounded out, single, fly it out, and popped up. One out of four. Ten to one. St. Louis. There he goes. The throw is not in time, and he has just tied his own World Series record. That's his seventh stolen base. He has tied his own World Series record for most stolen bases set in seven games last year. Look at this form. He runs like a whippet. Here he is. Look at those long strides. Burning speed. There's his slide. Now he's tied the record. He's also tied the late Eddie Collins record of 14 World Series stolen bases. He's done that in two series, seven last year and seven this year. Ball one, as impressive as he was against the Red Sox last year, he's been even better this year. He's stolen seven bases in four games, and he's hitting with tremendous power in this series. Two homers, a triple, a double. He's got eight hits. Bounding ball to third is a fair, uh, fair ball, is it? Foul ball, they say now. Foul ball. Here's Mayo's 
Smith coming on again. Bill Freehand going down to argue. And Tom Gorman at third. The home plate umpire, I believe, is calling it a fair ball. Tough call for Gorman. The runner was on there. Brock getting back. Matthews is trying to seal the ball right by the bag. They're all gathered together. And they're explaining to the Flood, you're out. So Flood rounds out third to first. Brock is still on third. Roger Maris up. No hits in four times. Cardinals 10, the Tigers 1. The eighth inning. Ball one. All Brock would have to do now is a steal home and <laughs> be the crowning blow, George. Well, the Tigers are not too happy. I don't think about the way Brock has been running with such a big lead, and that might be the crowning blow, is right. One ball, no strike. A oh, and a snap by Dixon Hall. McCullough. Stabbing a hot smash off the bat of America. Two down. Klaus played an excellent World Series. Very steady in the field and chipped in with five hits. You know, Kurt, uh, Denny McLean's almost a sense to be the most valuable player in our league and maybe Bill Free and second, but you can make a real case for Dick McCollum. He contributed a whole lot to this tennis, and uh, he could very well be the most valuable player without any argument. Orlando Cepeda now. One hit him three times. Brock still on third. Inside to him for a ball. Cardinals have scored four times in the eighth. They're leading 10 to 1. These four runs, of course, are charged to Hiller. One ball, no strike. Cepeda going after the curve, fouls are back. One and one. Blue Brock of third. Tied two records with that steal of third. Tied his own and tied the late Eddie Collins record. One ball, one strike. One and two to Cepeda. He's the eighth batter up this inning for the Cardinals. Tigers have more action in their bullpen. Warden. Is warming up. John Ward. Doing two. The Cardinal bullpen has been as quiet as Sleepy Hollow today. Gibson out in front with a big lead now. There he is, John Ward. Two and two. down. Blue Brock's on third. Three and two. Rock of third, two away. Ground ball, 
Cash down on one knee for it will have to throw to the pitcher covering. And that retires the side. But the Cardinals came up with four big runs. Two hits. There was one error and one left. At the end of seven and a half, it's St. Louis 10 and Detroit 1. to the eighth inning. The Tigers are trailing 10 to 1 as they send up the top of their batting order, Dick McAuliffe, Mickey Stanley, and Al Kaline. McAuliffe has grounded out and struck out twice. Bob Gibson has allowed four hits. He has struck out 10. There's a ground ball to the right side. Javier up with it, over to Zapata, and they have one out. Mickey Stanley's fouled out, struck out, and slide out. Gibson has walked two today. He hangs on to this lead. Ball one. He will set a World Series record, the first pitcher to ever win seven consecutive World Series games. Two and 64, three last year, and if he holds here, it'll be two this season. All two, two and nothing. The 2-0 pitch to Stanley is a strike, two and one. Right now, he shares a record with Lefty Gomez and Red Ruffin, the six World Series victories in a row. There's a drive into left center. Going over for it is Lou Brock, two down. Al Kaline has double, single, and lined out. Al Dock with injuries again. He's been a hard luck player in his career with the Tigers. He missed a month with a broken arm this year. The strike. He had a foot operation a couple of years ago. A ball and uh, his average was down 260, 270, but he finished strong and wound up leading the Tigers in batting at the end of the year. A 1 1 pitch. There's a ground ball to Dell Maxville. Makes his throw. Gets him, gets him out quickly in the eighth. At the end of eight innings, it's the St. Louis Cardinals 10 and the Detroit Tigers 1. In the top of the ninth inning, Tim McCarver, Mike Shannon, and Julian Javier will be up. Ten runs, 12 hits, no errors. For St. Louis, one run, four hits, three errors. The game was in 35 minutes late in starting, and it was delayed an hour and 15 minutes in the third inning because of rain. <coughs> Darrell Patterson's first pitch is outside. Until the Cardinals got those four runs in the eighth inning, just about everybody stayed in this ballpark. Now we've got quite a few empty seats, especially out in the exposed areas. A 1-0 pitch. Liner sinking quickly in the left center for a base hit. And here goes McCarver on the second. Willie Horton picked up the ball. That's the third hit for McCarver. An error. Northrop. Northrop. On uh, Northrop. A single for McCarver. And the Tigers have made four errors today. McCarver at second. Nobody out in Shannon now. Two hits and four times.
Cardinals had 13 hits yesterday, 13 hits again today. Broken bat grounder to short, Mickey Stanley. Into the dirt, Cash. They've been making low throws over him today, and he's done a good job coming up with them. The Carver stayed at second, one out. Javier struck out, walked single, and doubled. Alan Ross has been our statistician on the World Series, as he has been during the season on NBC's Major League Baseball game every Saturday. Our production manager, returning to his hometown, nearby Old Cork Town here in Detroit, Jim O'Gorman. to Javier. Nelson Brile against Mickey Lolich. Matched up again as they were in game two in St. Louis. They'll be going tomorrow. The weatherman says it's a better day tomorrow. Clear weather. Temperature should be about 65. the weathermen their predictions are 90 percent true 10 percent of the time two balls and no strike they were right today they called it right on the nose all the weathermen so it'll be raining all day and half doing nothing runner on second one out high fly in the left center jim northrop waiting for it Well, that's two down, and brings up Dal Maxville, who has struck out, grounded out, struck out, and walked. shallow center. Northrop wasn't playing too deep. Came on to grab it, retiring the side. In the ninth inning, the Cardinals had no runs, one hit. There was one error, one left. At the end of eight and a half, the Cardinals ten and the Tigers one. The last call for the Tigers in the last of the ninth inning with Cash, Horton, and Northrop scheduled up. Bob Gibson has walked two today, has struck out ten. The only inning he has is struck out a batter, at least one batter in the series. Game in the eighth inning. Norman Cash has struck out, fouled out, and popped up. It is really dark here. The lights have been on the entire game. Lights out up here, the umpire signal. There we go. We had uh, some lights on inadvertently, switched on in the booth, and they signaled us to turn them on. Oh, when quite a glare, and if somebody had looked up with a fly ball or popped up this way, it might have bothered them. Glad to oblige. The 1 0 pitch, foul up. Of the single in the right field. Cash on first to lead off the last of the ninth. Willie Horton up, walked and struck out twice.
That is the first Tiger hit this north of Homer with one out in the fourth. What a stop by McCarver in that fastball in the dirt. One ball, no strikes to Willie Horton. The Cardinals have a nine-run lead in the last of the ninth inning. They're ahead 10-1. to Foul against the chest protector, the umpire. One and one. The rain is completely stopped. For the first time, warm up action in the Cardinal bullpen. Ron Willis, he lost the high fly in the left center. Brock's coming hard, Flood's there to make the grab. Brock went right by him, and Flood took it. Larry Jaster, the left hander, warming up. Jim Northrup was fly to left, hit a home run. The only run scored off Gibson today, and he's grounded out. One strike to Jim Northrup. One out. Norman Cash at first base. Cardinals 10, Tigers 1. Down the ball, hit down to Cepeda. Steps on first, throws to second. Here's a double play that ends the ball game. They had to force off and had to make the tag of second. Bob Gibson being congratulated as he wins another big one for the Cardinals. Breaks the all-time World Series record by winning his seventh World Series game in a row. Breaking the record he shared with Lefty Gomez and Red Ruffing. So that last of the ninth inning, it's no runs, one hit, or no errors, and nobody left. Ten runs, 13 hits, no errors for the Cardinals. One run, five hits, and four errors for the Tigers. And so, George Kell, the Cardinals now go two games up. They lead three games to one. If there's any solace for the Tiger fans, though, last year the Cardinals went ahead in the same pattern of the Red Sox, and the Red Sox came back to send the series into the seventh game, but the Tigers, of course, now have quite a job in front of them. Well, the Tigers have their back to the wall, Kurt. I don't think there's any doubt about that. They got another dose today of what they got yesterday. Lusty hitting by the Cardinals, and then they ran into that man, Bob Gibson, who was just about as tough as he was on opening day. Not quiet, but uh, it's going to be tough. They're going to come back tomorrow with Mickey Lolich against Bryles and, and just hope for the best. And uh, Mickey's been the only one that can win for him so far. And Lou Brock tied two series records today. Seven steals in a series. Tying his record he set last year in seven games. And his 14th stolen base in a World Series competition tying the late Eddie Collins record. And Brock has a chance to break that one tomorrow. So on behalf of George Gall here, this is Kurt Gowdy saying goodbye also for Tony Kubek. Final score, Cardinals win it 10 to 1. This game is authorized under television rights granted by the commissioner's office solely for the entertainment of our audience and any publication, reproduction, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the express written consent of the commissioner's office is prohibited. So the Cardinals have taken the lead in the 1968 World Series. Three games to one now. Don't forget to join Jim Simpson and Sandy Koufax again tomorrow at 12.30 Eastern Time for a World Series report to be followed by Game 5 of the World Series. The fourth game of the 1968 World Series has been brought to you by...